tell you my music selection, but but this is just gets us in a happy mood, right? <laughs> it's it's this is, perfect. This is not the no. best. This is awesome Tuesday no, music. Gonna, no, keep keep, it keep going. Keep it going. What you guys day. need to hear what what Andre selected. It's okay. perfect. Okay. Uh yeah. This is a Tuesday music. This is trucker music. No, right. it's not trucker right. music. Yeah. It's a tree it's with birds and the birds are chirping and jumping from one branch <laughs> to the next. This is great. Okay. Okay, I think we should win this spare everybody that um Whew. Uh, welcome to another which car or truck should I buy? Happy Tuesday, guys. Happy Tuesday. And today's topic is all about mid-sized trucks. And of course, it's about your questions, your discussion about which car or truck should I buy. Indeed. Uh, this is a really big year for mid-sized trucks because there are two new players on the field. And because of that, the question we're posing is, should the Toyota Tacoma be worried? Yes, and I was at, well, we were in Chicago at a show this year in February, and I was at the Toyota Pavilion, and I asked that question to their, some of their chief marketing officers and chief engineers. Right. And I said, are you guys worried about the Jeep Gladiator and the uh, Ford Ranger coming on the scene? Right. And what did they say? They said, all competition is good. And they said, when there's more competition, Toyota Tacoma does better. So that's the, that's the Toyota line, right? So basically, uh, rising tide lifts all boats? So uh, yes, it could. But yes. uh, once we get to the Toyota Tacoma, you're going to see that there has been a little bit of a change. But you're going to have to stay tuned for that. Let's talk about uh, the ranking of these vehicles. Now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, vehicles, or is there seven? Well, well um, what's really driving the show... Um, is the recent announcement by from May, right? The sales report from May, because uh, the sales data just came out. Right. And Jeep officially said how many Gladiators they sold. Which is really cool. And then we have a little bit of an inside line on the Ford Ranger, too. So yeah. that's pretty cool stuff. So the information we have here is uh, both official and somewhat unofficial. Right? Y yes. So the G FCA says, Jeep says that they sold in May, which is their first full month of sale in the United States, 2,584 trucks. Now that's an important th number because when Ford had their first month and brought out the Ranger, they sold 2,153 trucks. Less. So, but not by a huge margin. No. No. And uh, so, funny f fact. In the same month, May 2019, Honda Ridgeline outsold the Gladiator. <laughs> Honda Ridgeline sold 2,888 trucks. Once again, this Jeep is just beginning. It's yeah. just starting out. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of back orders and a lot of other things going on with the Gladiator right now. In fact, the launch edition, I believe, is still not available, but people are buying the regular ones. Am I correct? Yeah, so what happened on April 4th, Jeep sold, or took orders on 4,190 launch edition Rubicons. Those are really expensive ones. Like one of the most expensive Rubicons you can get, which is like 62,000 and change. Right. And then they said, oh, we well, didn't say, but they said, but they're going to be built later, like July, August. Did that piss off consumers or what? I think somebody because, pissed off. Because, yeah, they wanted theirs first, and now they have to wait pretty much until everybody else is able to walk into a dealership and take one. So there you go. <laughs> like, I, yeah, there's a little bit of a disconnect at FCA on that one, I'll tell you. Uh, you were talking about the Honda Ridgeline. They sold 2,888 this May, which is pretty good. Um, if, uh, last year, they sold 2,894, so their sales are holding relatively steady. Now, granted, not everybody considers that a mid-sized truck, but it does technically compete, and it is cross-shopped against some vehicles on this list. It's probably the best riding trucklet out there because it's got independent suspension. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, on the highway, it handles that really well. And, uh, yeah, but a lot of people say it doesn't have a frame. Well, it has a subframe. It has blah, a subframe. It can do some basic things, and here's the cool part about it. If you really don't like tr pickup trucks, but you need something with a bed, then that's a vehicle to look at. You know, a sports utility vehicle basically with a bed is a good way to look at it. And it can tow. We've towed with it. It did pretty well, yeah. and it can haul actually pretty decent numbers. So it's okay. Boom. Daniel Ta Tabor, love the show. Keep it up. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it very Thank much. Thank you, Daniel. We really appreciate that. By the way, there might be some disruptions as we do this broadcast because we just heard thunder in the background. Typical Colorado, we have sunshine during the day in the late spring and thunderstorms in the afternoon. It is the afternoon here. So if there are disruptions, we apologize. It's Roman's fault. Well, yes. hey, at least it's not snowing anymore. <laughs> it's not snowing. Knock on wood. Wait until next weekend. 
Um, and of course, I want to acknowledge some of the people in the chat room, uh, Boney Chuck, Derek, Honorable Vince Clark, uh, Richard Russell, Juris Cleaning Lady. Thank you, as always, for joining. And, uh, Anderson uh, Rodriguez. I, I'm missing a lot of you guys. Dan Atkinson, Rob McKenna, Trucker Dan Videos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a lot of people are having some comments about, you know, how many, for example, Ford Rangers you can see mm -hmm. uh, on the street. And I'm seeing a couple. I'm uh, starting to see him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My, one of my neighbors actually just got one, and he ordered his. He was like one of the first on the list. So they are finally starting to trickle down and show up. And I got to be honest with you, I have a feeling Ford might have a hit on their hands. Yeah. So let's get to that because um, next on our list of mid-sized truck sales is actually Nissan Frontier. Right. The, the the most ancient truck as far as design is uh, concerned. On this list by far. Yeah. Uh, however. Uh, first of all, uh, just so you guys know, I still stand behind the fact that if you're looking for a basic truck, a really good deal, the Nissan Frontier is a solid choice. It can do everything these trucks can do, pretty much, with the exception of efficiency and power delivery. Oh, we got a little ding ding. Ding! Dan Atkinson, five bucks. Thank, Thank you, you, Dan. Appreciate it, as always. New Game of Thrones meme at Toyota. Competition <laughs> is coming. Yeah, you can just see the guys at Toyota with the big sword in front of them waiting and all the other guys lurking in the background. Even oh, Honda, instead um, of being a dragon, would be like a little lizard, but still, it would still be in the background. So, dude, if you, real quick, if you graph the Toyota Ridge, Ridgeline sales, it'll be kind of a flat line because they've sold under 3,000 trucks a month for Ever. the last couple of years, <laughs> yeah. several sorry, years. Andre, I'm sorry, the what Ridgeline? Uh, the Ridgeline is a flat line. You said Toyota Ridgeline. Oh, Honda, Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> if you were to graph that, if you were to graph the Nissan Frontier sales, it's pretty amazing because month to month, it goes like a sine wave, uh, just a wave. They would have a bad month, then a good month, and a bad month, and a good one. Yes, yes. but any, even a bad month is a good month considering how long they've been doing that. Think about it. The pressings, all the components on that vehicle are so ancient. They're making a fortune even if they're not selling nearly as many as they were before. Yes. So for you know, Nissan, it's still a good thing. This is still one of their hot sellers. By the way, Honorable Vince Clark, 21 bucks Canadian. Uh, thank you guys you. are awesome. No, you're awesome. Yeah. And Honorable Vince Clark, I don't know, I think you're on the board. Yeah. Uh, on the hood? Uh, on the hood. So uh, I'm trying. These Canadians put them up twice. I'm going rush. I'm trying to keep my track of it. Nissan sold almost 7,500 trucks in May, which is a lot. But Ford Ranger sold more. They did. Now, real quickly with the Frontier, it's up 8.1%. It's um, down. But it's oh. down, no, no, it's up eight point, uh, they gained some ground in May, but it's down eight uh, percent for the year. Uh -huh. for the year. So yes. let's get, you know, so it kind of balances out. Once again, as Andre was saying, it's kind of this rocky boat, but they're still making money on those trucks. A lot of money on those trucks. Yes, and they're a good little truck. Now, speaking of good little trucks, let's move on to the Ford Ranger. Probably one of the better trucks on this list in terms of tech. Yes. You get a standard four-cylinder turbocharged engine and a 10-speed automatic transmission right out of the box. You also have crawl control on the FX4 and a lot of other little features. Locking rear diff. Um, this is not an official number. So what happened is recently, in a few months ago, GM went, about a year ago, GM went through a quarterly reporting schedule on their sales. And then Ford said, well, we're going to do that too. So they didn't report officially for May, but other sources like Automotive News uh, found that information because it's kind of related to registrations and right. you know how many cars and trucks are sold across the country and they reported this is once again unofficial 7748 Rangers were sold in May almost 8000 trucks and that sounds about right doesn't yeah. it yeah and uh, we have I have a story about this on tfltruck.com where I'm doing kind of a, a graph to see how the Ranger is progressing. Right now, it's accelerating as far as its sales um, rate right. is concerned, as far as their sales. And the F-150 is kind of slowing down a little bit. And so the it's sort of an interesting compensation. Yeah, so it's hard to crack the nut, like what's happening to the F-Series, because they're kind of staying the same, but uh, maybe declining just a tiny bit. Just a tiny uh, bit. So is it because people are coming going from the F-Series to the Ranger? Is, are there other forces at play like the Ram trucks being very successful. I think so, it's a little bit of everything to yeah, be honest with yeah. you. But this is once again what we've been talking about. This is really good for you guys, the consumer, because the more trucks that are in this market, the more power you have to negotiate when you buy one. And uh, Scott Robinson has a really good comment in the uh, chat room. I cannot find a Ranger on, in Colorado for less than 40000 Damn. Really? So, so you, we're talking about deals, but right now the Ranger seems to be hot. Dang, Christian Nunes, 
When is the next big truck show? I'm curious if there's going to be any info on the 2020 Ford Raptor. I'd say probably next year in Chicago. Well, Detroit, wait, wait, September. It, Isn't the, the truck show in Texas in September? Well, well there, is a, there is a um, state fair of Texas, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, yeah, that could be um, a big one too. <clears throat> so we don't know about when 2020 Ford Raptor news is coming, by the that way. That we don't know. Um, but we know that the state fair of Texas in Dallas is a big epicenter of truck information. And that's only a few so, months away. It's three months away. And we usually attend that. So, uh, and Andre usually is the one who goes. They like to go and party. So um, if you guys are there, party it's, with it's, them. It's often very, very hot, even in September. Uh, but... Uh, where was I? Oh, price of uh, Fords. Before price of Fords. Did. Bradley Graham, 98408. Two bucks. You know, thank you, Bradley. We appreciate it, buddy. Lo love that. You but. Was, well, before one sec, he was asking, how about the uh, Santa Cruz Hyundai's? Uh, okay, so Santa. this is what we've heard recently from other sources, nothing official from Hyundai. But they say that they are still working on it and it won't look the same as the concept, which I thought the concept looked awesome. We have the most watched video on the Honda, Hyundai Santa Cruz of anybody on the internet. So go ahead and check it out. It's on TFL Truck. And um, yeah, as far as we now know, according to certain experts, it's going to look different, but they're still working on it and they're quite serious about it. I'm tired of being teased by Hyundai about the Santa Cruz. I am sick and tired of being teased. Um, they said it's coming, then it's not coming, then it's coming. We have seen only one concept, like you said before. Uh, and until they show pictures or something about the new truck, I'm not going to... Fair enough. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm it's very difficult to get behind <laughs> something that is, you know, we do, we look, we deal in rumors, we're journalists, but at yes. the same time, we have seen nothing concrete. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't give you much more information but on that But it brings a good point about disruption. Yes. You know, we're talking about this Toyota Tacoma um, worried about losing sales, losing market share. Um, a lot of the companies, traditional companies are Staying traditional, right? right? The Nissan is still on the long life cycle, you know. <laughs> the um, forever life cycle? Right. Uh, the Ridgeline is selling about the same. The Jeep Gladiator and the R Ford Ranger, I mean, they're good trucks, both of them. But who's going to disrupt? Is Hyundai going to come in? Is VW going to come in with a little truck? VW uh, uh, is another one that's rumored to be serious about a truck and even working with Ford on that. Or startups. Yes. Or startup companies. Uh, startups, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and there's a couple of them. That well, Rivian is kind of playing in the same kind of mid-size, full-size space, you know, with their upcoming concepts. And according to Tesla, they're going to tow one million pounds. <laughs> or is it 300,000? Yeah, so last year, what happened was uh, Elon Musk on Twitter, of course, um, said that the new pickup truck from Tesla will tow 300,000 pounds. Yes, he did. Um, you, know, you know, that's true because a mini electric recently towed a big jumbo jet. So you could actually tow something on flat ground for a few feet. That had, sure, yes. they did it with a space shuttle on a Tundra. Yes, so, absolutely. I mean, you, you, know, could, you could tow a building uh, for a few feet, but you're not going to be towing it on a highway or stopping it on a highway or doing anything else. Right. So we're going to see whether or not that claim holds true and if his $50,000 claim holds true. Those are both iffies. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there are a couple comments from Joey's cleaning lady, I think hits on a really good point, uh, talking about this possible Volkswagen Ford tie up. Uh, I know there have been rumors floating around that, you know, there Ford has the Ranger here. Yep. Yes. Volkswagen may bring a pickup into our market. Will it essentially just be a Ranger with the VW badge? Will it be an entirely different truck? And the examples that were given were the Mitsubishi Raider, which was a pre badge Dodge Dakota, and the Suzuki Equator which was uh, Nissan Frontier. That is correct. Yeah, there is a lot of badge engineering going on. We don't know what they're going to do. Now, you have to look at Volkswagen in, in terms of what they're considering for you know coming into the United States with a pickup truck. Right now, pickup truck sales are hot. So do you save a little bit of money and go off a Ford platform and perhaps build your own vehicle? Or do you do what Volkswagen did with FCA when they built the minivan, the Rotan? which was a terrible idea. It was a badge. It was a, no, it was more than a badge. They actually well, had some unique body panels on it. headlights and a grill. Uh, yeah, and it, it, first of all, it didn't look very good. But second of all, it just wasn't a great idea and it didn't sell a lot. So would they go that route? I'm not so sure. So, yeah, so the, the, there's a lot of news about this. Um, exactly how it's gonna work out, we don't know yet because I think the big, the powers that be at VW and Ford are still working things out. Um, it sounds like the, um, it's a global thing, right? So right. they're looking not just United States, they're looking globally. So will Ford Ranger be a VW truck somewhere else? 
uh, et cetera, et cetera. But VW has their own, you know, like compact truck. Yeah, the they got Tarok, the Amarok. And, and the Tarok. And the Tarok. Uh, that was just came out in, uh, in New York, at the New York Auto Show. That is true. And yeah. it's entirely possible we may see something like that or possibly an electric truck as well. Bear in mind, Volkswagen is working really hard right now to electrify their fleet, and they're quite serious about it. They've sunk billions into it. So that could be a possibility as well. We don't know. And so, you know, we could throw out as many guesses as we want, but there's only so much. By the way, somebody said the Raider is a Dodge D50. Okay, uh, real quickly, the Raider was actually a couple of different things. They switched names. It was at one point a Mitsubishi uh, Montero that was driven by Dodge, and they called it the Raider. Then later on, when they changed the names, they actually had the Do uh, Dodge Dakota become the Mitsubishi Raider. Uh, so they switched those names that way, at least in this country. So just so you know on that. Uh, okay, let's move on to the main topic here, which is, of course, Toyota Tacoma, right? Yeah, Toyota. And before we get there, uh, Braden or Braden R makes a good point. Uh, he just purchased the Silverado 1500 Trail Boss for about 43000 Okay, far up. And uh, we're talking about midsize truck prices sometimes far exceeding that number. Yep. So there's a lot of crossover in pricing, which is really interesting. It, it is, and it's now at a point where, I mean, look, there's Jeeps right now, the, the Gladiator, some of them are up to $60,000. Yes. You can get a $50,000 Toyota Tacoma. You can get um, a $54,000 Chevy Colorado ZR2. That is correct. Yes. So the question is, kind of like what size do you want more than what price do you want to pay, right? I think it has to do with whether or not you want to stick one of these things in your garage. I cannot fit a uh, Ford F-150 in my garage. It's I an old garage. Either. I have a 19-foot garage. I know it kind of sucks, but, but I have three spaces. Right. But, I but, two, I, but lengthwise, I can't, I can't fit a truck in there. No, nope. and, and that's what actually one of the issues that some people have. Look, my wife can't stand driving a full-size truck, and especially a heavy-duty truck, but with mid-size trucks, she was okay with it. I had a Toyota Tacoma. Other than running over people at certain places, she was great with driving it around because it was small and maneuverable. So it's a question of taste in terms of size as opposed to price nowadays, because some of these prices are outlandish for mid-size trucks. Yeah, before we move on to Toyota, which is, we're going to wrap up this conversation yeah. in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're, we're actually selling a really cool hoodie. Yes, we are. So let's mention that really quick, because uh, it, it's the hoodie we all wear in some, a lot of our videos. Yes, and let me interject real quickly. Thanks to the sales of that hoodie already, we've been able to update our sound system thanks to you guys. We're actually wearing these labs, which are yes. fairly high tech, and you guys actually made this possible. We literally didn't have it and in it our budget to do it. And it makes the show better. It does, and so thank you. Your support directly goes into what we're able to do here, and it also occasionally feeds me. So those are great. Uh, so tell us about this sweater. It is, sorry, hoodie. Being fed is a good thing. <laughs> so we got logos front on the front, car and truck. Everywhere. And on the sleeves, you got fast lane truck and fast lane car. So you can kind of go like this and show off your fast laneness. Roman loves labels. We are covered with them. <laughs> so you will never be mistaken for any other so organization. So 199 donation in Super Chat. Why is it 199? Because, well, these cost quite a lot. Um, and also YouTube takes uh, a, a cut. A huge chunk. So, but like Nathan said, the money goes directly to our show. Yeah, so it does. So that's why we charge 199. We're sorry about the price. Believe me, we wish we could make it cheaper, but you can get these. <laughs> for 10 bucks, you can get a bumper sticker. 25 bucks patch and 50 bucks hat. And, and we'll even autograph the hat for you. Yeah, and also we autograph, by the way, limited run on the sweatshirt. Uh, oh, only 100 of these and we're down already. We sold actually a few. So uh, yeah, so by all means, get on it we, because we once we're, once we'll we're done with it, yes, we'll sign the inside and number them on the inside. And once they're gone, they're gone. Yes. So, there it is. Uh, yeah. Right. Just wanted to jump in. So uh, we appreciate any donations we get, anything in between, you know, one dollar, two dollars, up to, you know, one ninety nine. All of that helps. At one hundred ninety nine. So whatever you're able to donate, we really appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. We and appreciate during it. this show, we already had several two dollar donations, which are awesome. Five dollar donations, which are awesome. Canadian donation, which uh, is even awesome. Is more awesomer. It, it uh, can be awesomer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it can. Um, so, yeah, but no, seriously, guys, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, okay, let's, we want to go for a couple comments. Anything uh, pop out to you? Well, uh, let's get through the Tacoma. Okay, yeah, so fire away on the Tacoma because the so numbers the, are huge. So, we've been talking about like 2,500 trucks, 3,000 trucks, 8,000 trucks. Right. Tacoma don't care. 
<laughs> so Tacoma says, I'm going to sell 22,832 trucks in one month. So yep. they're basically doubling what a lot of the competitors are selling in the same Or nearly month. tripling in yes. some cases or, yes. quadrupling. or more. Yeah. Um, but there's a little bit of a change in their sales, isn't it? Indeed there is. You see, they were soaring at like a 15 to 20% growth between 2018 and 2017. Soaring. Insane. But, right. This year is showing an 8% growth. It's not a loss. They're not losing. They're not dropping. There still are more trucks this year than last year. But 8% as opposed to 15 slash 20%, that's a major dip. And I think, and I think we would agree on this, that a lot of that has to do with the competition because there are trucks being sold. We haven't even finished with all the trucks. There are still a couple other automakers on this list. And yeah. the more there are, the more bites are being taken out of Tacoma sales. Yeah, before that, Trucker Den videos, 10 bucks. Oh, thank you. Super excited to get my hoodie, and I love supporting you guys. We love your support. Thank you, Trucker Den. And we I appreciate it. I will say, Trucker Den, it is on its way. It's, it's on its way. way. It's it. It. If you don't have it today, then very soon. You've it's heard it here. It's, it's in the on mail. the truck. <laughs> it's, it, there's a Toyota Tacoma carrying it to you right now. Um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, there was a couple of really odd, odd, um, great comments in the, in the chat room, and I'm being a little overwhelmed by the comments. So I, I appreciate it. Um, what I was going to say about the Tacoma, so they're still growing. Like you said, 8% growth. A lot of manufacturers would kill for that. Oh, hell yeah. Would, would kill for that type of growth. But by next year this time, we're going to see some very interesting numbers by the competition. First of all, look, we know that both the Ford uh, Ranger and the Jeep Gladiator are going to be pretty, pretty popular, okay? They're selling, and they're gonna keep selling for a while, provided the economy keeps somewhat moving on, right? And because of that, these numbers could be drastically different by this time next year. Yeah, and what happened with Tacoma, actually, first of all, Toyota will point out that Tacoma's been on sale constantly. They haven't taken a few years There's off. There's no hiatus. There's no hiatus. They were always selling trucks, and they attribute a lot of their success to that, that they stay true to their customers and maintain that sale over the last three decades. So right. that's one thing. Um, also, they have multiple factories, which makes it more complex. Including the one in Mexico that's about to open. Yeah, and they also had the Baja facility going on for a while. Right. So um, th that's how they're able to produce more trucks and actually sell more. but. World relations are getting more complex, so it's going to be interesting how that works out. Yeah, there's going to be some things happening in the near future that are going to affect many trucks, actually many vehicles throughout, well, their tariffs, guys, you know this. So the bottom line is that Toyota is still showing growth and they're still dominating. However, we're seeing the numbers change. And there are two more vehicles on this list, by the way, um, that we we have but we don't have all the information on them and that's the chevy colorado yeah. and the gmc canyon and i can fill in some blanks here yeah, but before ahead. that honorable vince clark is asking can i get a hoodie for 200 canadian uh vince clark i don't know what the exchange rate is what is that it's like a 160 us and i don't know about shipping i'll tell so you what uh send send that email. request send us an email yeah at uh, info at uh tflcar.com Sure. We'll work out details. And, and we'll work out details. You'll Thank talk you, to our, yeah. our boss and he'll he'll talk to you. Yeah, we, we all report to somebody, right? Yeah. Um, but so GM hasn't reported in May officially, and we were, were not able to find exact numbers on May. Mary Barra uh, is hiding the numbers. Uh, she, well, she will report next month. Okay. Uh, but they're approximate to selling about 11,000 Colorados a month. Mm. That's according to the last quarter sales. Okay. And about 2,300 GMC Canyons a month. So if you combine those two numbers, they're selling about uh, 14,000 trucks per month together, GMC and Chevrolet. So they're still, no, they're still not close to Tacoma, and they have plateaued basically at this number. Now keep in mind that although they do have the new uh, Bison and of course the ZR2, those are halo vehicles, but they actually make a pretty substantial dent in the amount of trucks they're selling. Isn't it up to like 25%? Uh, 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 the ZR2s and Bisons combined uh, make up... Of, uh, of the total? I yeah. think it was closer to 10. Is it I 10? Mean, I mean, I, I thought it was I, more. I don't okay. remember. They don't usually report how the different trim levels and... Uh, I know they sold uh, 2,000 Bisons. Uh, that was the allotment for 2019. That's it, yeah, and there's no more and being sold for well, 2019. Yeah, but then next year they'll probably open up their order books again. Which would be smart, sure. yeah. Um, but, you know what? Sherry Colorado is getting old in the tooth, too. Long in the tooth. 
a because, little bit because it came out in 2015. Right. It's been updated. Uh, you know, new transmission, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, it's been oh, what almost four or five years. Still, if you look at the numbers, you can see that the Colorado slash GMC Canyon combined are only second to Toyota Tacoma. So even though, yeah, they're not at 22,000, they are well over Ford, uh, Ranger, and Nissan fr uh, Frontier. So they are doing something to definitely sit on the heels of Toyota. Now, they're supposed to update the vehicle, but only the, the, at least the Colorado, but we have an article on tfltruck.com, and it's not a lot of updates, unfortunately. Yeah, because people expected either a full facelift or like an all new truck to pop or, out. Or at least a new interior. Um, but neither is happening for 2020. Um, there's something else going on in the chat room. People are asking about the Mercedes X-Class because they're, they're saying yeah. that it might be missing a, a piece of the pie. Uh, you recently wrote a kind of story addressing this. Uh, yeah, that's that's Luxury right. trucks. Luxury trucks is actually on Ask Nathan, which is on tflcar.com. Uh, I answer questions that come in via email. And one of the people was asking about a Lexus pickup truck, yes. which was a rumor actually for a while. And actually one of the people from Lexus said, yeah, it might be interesting a little while ago. Uh, and the other vehicle on that list was also, yeah, the X uh, type truck. And um, here's the thing, that is based on a Nissan Nirvana, which is also the Nissan Frontier basically, kind of, sort of. And would you pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a base model Mercedes-Benz pickup truck that's basically a Nissan Frontier? Mm, that's something I don't think they want to gamble with right now, at least in the United States. But overseas, yeah, they're selling a few of them. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if we're going to see that happen here anytime soon. But I'll tell you what: if truck sales keep going up, then you might. Heck yeah! Um, there's a couple of comments. First, Todd Wilson says the next gen Colorado will be will be here in two years. Well, we don't, I don't okay, know what your I source don't, is, but whatever your source but is, awesome. It's, uh, it sounds reasonable because sure. that would make it put it like a seven year life cycle. Um, also, people are asking, uh, why would you get a mid size truck inside of a full size truck? I think we're trying to address that. We covered that, that you know, size, maneuverability, packaging in some cases. And look, some people want the small mid size truck, something like a Nissan Frontier the base model with a manual transmission, that's a super inexpensive truck. It's around 20 grand. And you can't really get that with a full-size truck. So you can still get a less expensive mid-size truck over a full-size truck, especially if you have a small company, you know, and you don't need the full-size truck. So there, there are plenty of reasons for buying one. Um, also, off-roading is maybe another reason. Yeah, look, I, a I'm giant truck on a small trail is not really working. It's not ideal. Having a smaller truck on that trail is much easier to work with, yeah. as we've seen before. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting quandary between the two, but there are reasons for both, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, we have a couple of questions that came in before the show. Yes. So through email, and we wanted to touch well on both of them actually. Um, Eric is asking, uh, what gives? Why is the manual transmission Jeep Gladiator truck uh, towing rating is only 4,000 pounds, where an, an automatic one is up to 7,650 pounds? And I asked uh, Jeep specifically uh, what the specific limitation is, and they said, we'll get back to you. And they didn't get back to you, did they? Well, not quite yet. <laughs> this was just a few days ago. Right. There is a simple answer to that, though, and that's the, um, having um, you know, the automatic transmission over a manual transmission has one major difference. There's cooling. That's part of the issue. Now, what is a major component inside of an uh, automatic transmission? There, it's the uh, doohickey. <laughs> So when you it's have a man, yeah, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at the question here. It's all right. It's not a catalytic converter. Yes. It's. Well, it's a clutch. Torque converter. Torque converter. Just okay. Trying, trying to give oh, you a hint. Okay. Torque converter is able to dissipate heat a lot easier, <laughs> uh, actually in a much more efficient yes. way. So when you have all that stress that's going through the transmission when you're towing something, especially off the line, having you know something that cools it throughout the vehicle uh, it makes it a lot more durable and it's much more capable because of it you don't have that with a manual transmission look i love manual transmissions but i've tried towing heavy objects with them and i've fried clutches before and there is a reason behind that go ahead and take care of this michael roy a 15 bucks canadian thank which you which truck did you guys prefer during your recent review of the 2.7 liter ecoboost versus 5 liter f-150 is that out yet we published a couple of ones. Uh, we published yours and I's MPG loop. Yeah. And uh, we have a couple more coming. Uh, we also did a drag race. Yes, we did. Um, and uh, Which is published. Um, 
I've been on the V8 bandwagon for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and this EcoBoost is making it harder and harder for me to stay on the v in the V8 camp. Right. Because when you and I towed, the little 2.7 liter EcoBoost got up to speed quicker. It, was, it felt more effortless. Oh, yeah. It towed better. Um, it passed it easier. It, it didn't have quite the fuel economy of the 5 liter under heavy load. Right. That is true. Yes. But it's quicker truck altogether. So it's making it really hard <laughs> to uh, keep wanting that V8. That EcoBoost is a fantastic engine. Uh, everything else aside, in terms of the questions of what other you know, long-term reliability might be, all those other things, in terms of right now, this moment, that engine is a superior driving engine to the Coyote. And I hate saying that because I love the Coyote V8. But that turbocharged engine, especially up here at high with, elevation. With that caveat, yes. If, I, if we were at sea level, I think the V8 makes much more sense. Yep. Uh, but here at higher elevations, mountain towing, those turbos really help. They really do um, help. A couple more questions. Um, sorry, I'm losing it. Okay. So yeah, we, we answered the Gladiator question. Somebody's asking, when is Ram going to update their heavy duty gas V8 numbers to match where Ford and Chevrolet will be going? Because heavy duty truck, actually, this fall is going to be the heavy duty truck season. That's right. Because, well, we already have 2019 Ram heavy duties. Right. Um, the Chevrolet GM heavy duties are coming in um, August ish time frame to like dealers, maybe August, September. Right. And then later in the fall, maybe November, December, is Ford new heavy duty. That, that's including the 7.3 liter gas engine that they're about to introduce. Which about which we know almost nothing as far as specs. We have so little information on that. Um, so the question is though about the Ram, and here's the thing. Uh, Recently, Ram did update the transmission for the heavy speed, duty, and it made all the difference. It's a much more efficient vehicle. It delivers power better. So I'm pretty sure in their book of priorities, they're looking at other things before they're looking at making a more powerful gas V8. Yeah. That's, that's just my guess, but I think it's logical to assume. Yeah, and also um, they usually do a June event where they introduce some 20 or next year upcoming tech uh, yeah. changes. Yeah, and um, they usually embargo it until like September 1st. Right, Roman and uh, Tommy will be going to that one this year. Yeah, so we'll be at that event with FCA and Ram and Jeep and all of them. And um, so you might see something there on September 1st coming out, some news maybe. Right. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure Ram has something up their sleeve. They usually do. Look, this is a really competitive segment. It is the most competitive segment in the United States. So they can't just sleep, you know, and just say, ah, whatever. They have to remain competitive. All of them do, which is why this report is so interesting. Um, uh, the, other, the other question that came in uh, uh, here is about the three liter Duramax uh, light duty diesel in the new Silverado and Sierra 1500 trucks. And uh, the question is from Jack, and Jack is saying, how come this engine is rated at about 9, 000, mid 9,000 pound towing range? Which is true, the two-wheel drive is rated at 9,700 pounds, right. and the four x four at 9,400 pounds. How come it's not higher? Because it has 460 pound feet of torque. Mm -hmm. um, so I I'm going to this event actually in a couple of weeks, right. and I'm going to ask them this question. So I don't have a direct answer for you, Jack, uh, but but you know it's uh, all these trucks are rated according to the standard, right? That the J twenty eight oh seven, including the manual transmission Gladiator it's has right. to pass the same standard. Nicholas Ward, two bucks. Thank you, Nicholas. Appreciate um, it. What is that? We'll we'll get to you in one second. Okay, um, uh, we'll cover that. And that has to do with heat. They have to withstand like Davis Dam in the middle of summer, right? Towing on that grade, um, you have to be able to turn with a trailer. You have to do all these maneuvers, braking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's how they rate them. If they can't rate it over ten thousand pounds, they won't. Uh, part of it has to do with the axle and also the gear ratio and some yeah. other things as yeah, well. Yeah, how that so matches up with the engine. Absolutely. That's exactly it. So they have to do a balance between capability and MPG and performance. Those are the three balls that are thrown up at the air at any given time. So in order for you to have your vehicle that is comfortable to drive every day and gets decent mileage, maybe that takes down that number a little bit. So what do you sacrifice in order to make, you know, get the higher uh, tow rating? That's a question that Andre is going to be answering when he goes to that event. Now, Nicholas Ward had a quick question. Uh, it's a $2 question, and he says, why do all mid-sized trucks look the same? They don't, but thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> yes, I think that from the profile, if you look at the new Ford Ranger and the Chevy Colorado, they do have a similar profile, 
but they don't look anything like the Jeep Gladiator, dude. And That's the answer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. And even the Honda uh, Ridgeline, that doesn't look like any of the other trucks. That's an issue with the Honda Ridgeline. It looks like an SUV. It, from it the does, front. and some people and still complain about that. And that's not right. Yeah, it's not. It's I'm not. complaining about it. He's complaining about it. I don't, like, I don't like the fake stripe on the Honda thing. It's, it's a whole other story. But there is a question of like crossovers and SUVs. Uh, their shapes are becoming the same. Yeah, well, um, a lot of crossovers look the same. And it's I hard agree. to actually get a crossover that's unique or a truck that's unique. But you, I think you nailed it. I think the Gladiator, even though it looks like a Wrangler in the front, <laughs> it, it, you cannot mistake it, it for You won't anything mistake it for else. any of no, the other trucks. No, and absolutely. also, I think that the Nissan, at least in its current uh, trim, looks a lot different than the other trucks, too. Yeah. It's, it's it has that old charm to yeah. it. Yeah, kind of squarish. So, yeah, they, they still do look a little bit different. Some of them look similar. So, there you go. All right. Um, uh, well, we kind of passed our half an hour uh, We did segment. indeed. Uh, anything else, Zach, before we wrap it up? No, I think we're good. Play us out, Andre. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, get a load of this music. This is Andre's <laughs> specialty. <laughs> oh, boy. Actually, I'm blaming Andre. I was the one who said, yeah, this is perfect for a Tuesday. So fire it up. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate always. all the support. Remember, this becomes a regular video. We'll try to answer a few more questions later on. You going to rock out with us? Wow. <laughs> Woohoo! It's like heavy metal, but not. <laughs> this, is, this is Tommy's music, I think, right?